So in this video, we are going to discuss about the string matching algorithms. There are multiple string matching algorithms that we use. Uh, there are string matching, which is a naive string matching algorithm. Then a part of naive string matching algorithm, we know there's a uh, rabin karp algorithm. Then we have finite automata based algorithm. And after the finite automata based algorithm, we have the algorithm which is KMP, that is Knuth, Morris, Pratt algorithm. And this name, uh, this was the name of the scientist, that is Knuth, Knuth Morris and Pratt. So we are going to discuss all these three algorithms. Uh, so let me write the name. The first string, the topic name is string matching. And in this string matching topic, we are going to study the following algorithms. Number one, uh, that is the naive string matching algorithm. The naive string matching algorithm. And after this naive string matching algorithm, next one is uh, the rabin karp algorithm. Raven Karp, and then we will study finite automata based string matching, finite automata based, and the fourth one will be uh, the string matching which is based on the uh, Knuth Morris Pratt. Knuth Morris Pratt, that is KMP algorithms. So, here uh, why we introduced these many different algorithms because each of each and every one of these algorithms is doing some kind of improvement as compared to the previous algorithm like we have the naive string matching now this raven carp algorithm reduced some improvements over the naive string matching then we have finite automata and the best one is the knuth morris pratt so first of all you need to study you need to know why we are studying the string matching algorithm why do, why is it so important and what is the main benefit of, benefit of string matching algorithms if you see some of the web browsers like if you uh, check a web browser like firefox right or maybe there are a lot of applications of string matching algorithm web browser is just a very simple and easy to use applications which we use in the daily life a part of web browsers there are so many different applications which are also there now in web browsers you see in the address bar, when you write www.google.com or even if you write for Facebook, if even if you write face, now it automatically suggests some websites. It automatically suggests Facebook or maybe face mash or whatever. Some websites are there. So it automatically suggests some of the websites and it do auto-complete. Right? And how does it automatically suggest these websites? Here, if, if you have only written face, now it is looking face or it, it is finding face as a substring of the given string, right? So here you can identify it like this. In case of string matching, we'll be having two things. Number one, we'll be having a text, which is, uh, which can be a very huge text or very large text. Maybe the text is like this, uh, A, B, A, C, D, B, B, D, C, A, C, B, A, D, C, B, something, something, a very large text. And we'll be having a pattern like this. Okay, so assuming this is a pattern. So, pattern is A, A, B, C, D. Okay, now this pattern may be present in this text or may not be present in this text. For example, assuming in this text we have the following pattern. Okay, so here you can see this pattern is already present in this text. And okay, and this text is actually stored in index locations like this uh, because if we know in case of C language the uh, strings are array of characters. So it is just denoting the array of characters like this. In the same way, the second string is also denoting array of characters. Now, our job is to find this particular pattern in this particular text. And if you want to find this particular pattern in this particular text, then uh, it can be very easy that means you can implement a very easy, easy algorithm which is a brute force algorithm or sometimes it is also called as a naive algorithm to search this pattern but the time complexity for the brute force or the naive algorithm is more as compared to the other algorithms so we introduced the other algorithms to uh, kind of you know uh, to improve the time complexity to search the following pattern onto the text for example if the length of the text is n and the length of the pattern is m the, the most simplest algorithm that you can propose the most simplest algorithm that is the name or you can say the brute force method that means where you are going to check every possible combination now that simplest algorithm is going to take order of n minus m plus 1 as the time complexity but our aim is to find out can we do something better than this okay so 
let us do one thing uh, i'll start with the naive algorithm and for this uh, i think you understood the problem what is the problem problem is like this there is a given text and this given text is containing so many uh, it can be having any length any length right and uh, that length can be very huge and there is a given pattern now we need to find whether this given pattern is present inside this text or not now if this pattern is present inside this text then we have to give or we have to return the starting index location of that particular pattern okay so uh, you need to implement this algorithm and uh, do one thing pause the video or uh, go back to programming and try to implement but where a c program or even if you prefer java or even if you prefer c++ or any programming language because in case of java we have already we already have some kind of built in functions even for in case of c and c++ we have built in function to find a substring it is kind of a finding a substring there already functions are there but i want you not to use those functions but rather implement your own technique to find out whether this given pattern is present inside the text or not if you can implement your technique then we can further improve it and we can further see how many different types of algorithms can be proposed um, to find out this pattern okay i think you understood what is the problem statement now just go back to your programming and give a solution to this problem statement okay so here i'm going to start with the first brute force technique that is the naive algorithm naive algorithm okay so let us start हमारे लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स पाने के लिए चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल आइकन को दबाना बिल्कुल ना भूलें ताकि हमारे सभी नोटिफिकेशंस आपको सबसे पहले मिले टीजीमेन टू एजुकेशन इज इंडिया बेस्ट प्लेटफॉर्म टू प्रिपेयर फॉर गेट एन टी ए यू जी सी नेट एंड पी जी टी कम्प्यूटर साइंस ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट टीजी मेंटो डॉट कॉम आरोप विजिट करें about the string matching algorithms and i told you that majorly there are four major string matching algorithms number one is the naive string matching algorithm then the second one is the rabin karp algorithm then we have finite automata based algorithm and then we have truth morris pratt that is kmp algorithm so in this video we will start with the uh, the discussion about the string matching algorithm which is a naive string matching algorithm okay so assuming that we have the following array this is the array that we have and this array is having some uh, characters see strings are array of characters in case of c language right in case of c language or uh, c++ you can uh, strings are mutable when i'm saying mutable that means you can make changes to the string but when we discuss about java in case of java the strings are immutable that means you cannot make changes to a string rather than whenever you make a change that a new string is defined a new memory area is defined and then you give the address of that memory area to that particular uh, variable so in java strings are implemented using classes but in case of c c++ strings are implemented using arrays because they are array of characters so assuming that we have the following data which is present a b c a b a c b d b c a and d this is the array that we have and this array is representing the array of text this is representing the array of text and we'll be having an array which is representing the pattern that means what is the pattern that we want to search in this particular array so assuming that the pattern that we want to search is b d b and c this is the pattern that we want to study now your job is to write an algorithm your job is to write an algorithm which can find out where is that base address of that pattern where this pattern is actually located in this given text and see generally this uh, this is uh, the text is generally very huge very large and the pattern is also very large but here for simplicity we are taking a very small pattern which is only of four characters in the same way we are taking a very small string which is having a few characters only that is for simplicity purposes okay so here assuming that these are the index locations 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 and this is 0 1 2 and 3 okay so as i told you that we have multiple algorithms number one is the naive algorithm that we are going to implement here naive or you can say it is also the brute force technique 
brute force technique what is this new algorithm or the brute force technique you are going to take this pattern and you are going to compare with every location okay that means initially uh, what you will do is you are going to take this given pattern and you are going to compare it with the first four locations right so if it could not match the first four locations then you are going to take it and match it with the second four locations then if it is uh, you cannot match it then you are going to take it and match it with the third four locations and so on so you are going to match it with every possible location into this given array but the problem with that is assuming that the length of this array is n that means if you are having total n characters in the text and you are having total n characters in the pattern then in worst case you have to uh, search from the beginning every index location you have to search and every time when you are going to perform this one then in worst case you are going to match it match the n m minus 1 characters that means if we have a string like this b d b a b d b b b d b c and so on now here in this case if you are going to match it with this one then you are going to see that first three characters are matched then the fourth one is not matched then you identified your mistake in the same way the first three characters are matched then the fourth one is not matched the first three characters are matched fourth one did matched so in worst case if you are going to search this uh, pattern to this text using naive string matching algorithm then it is going to take order of n minus m plus 1 into m as the time complexity this will be the time complexity of this algorithm so when i'm going to implement it as a function then you will be able to understand how we are getting this time complexity okay so let us try to figure out an algorithm based on this one uh, you can follow the uh, given topic from the book which is Corman. so thomas h Corman is there so you can use that book uh, where there's a special chapter chapter which is dedicated to the string matching algorithm but you are only going to get a algorithm implementation for the string matching we are not going to get a programmatical or program implementation for the string matching algorithm so for simplicity so we'll try to implement this here uh, how you are going to take it so we'll be making a function and assuming that uh, this is matching function okay this is a matching function and this function is going to take both text and the pattern as input so it is going to take character array text or you can just say instead of character array as text you can simply take character text as an array like this and you can take character pattern as an array these are the two locations two things that you need to find out okay now what you have to do is you have to match this pattern with the every location of the text okay for that purposes you have to take a loop but you, uh, you first need to find out what is the length of this text and what is the length of this pattern and assuming that in the last location we are storing null values okay you, you can do it like this okay now uh, I need to find a write down function to find the length of both the text and find out the length of both the patterns but uh, for simplicity here I'm just assuming that uh, we are passing those length and pattern into this array so that is integer n comma integer m where integer n is the length of the text and integer m is the length of the pattern okay now so we have to run a loop so for that loop we are going to take integer i and j as two uh, variables and as well as we are, we are also going to take a flag variable so integer flag is equal to uh, zero that means when we find or found out that we this pattern exists then we are going to come out of this one okay then we have to take for i is equal to zero that means from this index location from the starting index location you have to go to every index location okay so i'm trying to make it as simple as possible but uh, while implementing we may uh, do some changes so we are just first of all trying to figure out what how should we implement this particular algorithm so what we have to do is we have to take the first location here we have to take the first location and then we have to try and match this particular pattern now if you can see with the first location is a and the patterns containing b obviously a and b are not matching then we have to come out of this matching loop and then we have to continue otherwise um, and then we have to uh, go to the next location and find out the pattern okay so let us assume that um, 
वी आर टेकिंग फ्लैग इज इक्वल टू जीरो करेक्ट सो फॉर आई इज इक्वल टू जीरो आई लेस देन एन एंड वी हैव आई प्लस प्लस ओके सो हियर वी मे नीड टू फिल आउट सम कंडीशन लेटर ऑन सो दैट इज वाई एम कीपिंग दिस स्पेस इज एम टी नाउ आफ्टर यू एंटर इन टू द फर्स्ट लूप देन वी हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट द पैटर्न इज मैचिंग सो वी हैव टू मेक जे फॉर जे is equal to i that means from whatever the location is i is because initially we are going to take i into this location and we are going to match with this first location of j now if it is not matching then we have to take i into this location and again we have to match with, with the entire pattern if it is not matching then we have to take this with i and we have to match with the entire pattern and so on until we find out the index location so i is working on the text and j is working on this pattern so in any way if we are going to cross j to the fourth index location that means we found the pattern and um, the entire string is matched so we are going to take j is equal to i and j is less than m and we are going to take flag is equal to 1 correct so uh, for that purpose is let us assume here oh sorry yeah so mm, correct so let us assume here i'm going to take flag is equal to 1 for that purpose is so assuming flag is equal to 1 okay and flag uh, just instead of flag is equal to 1 then you just have to write and flag and then you are going to make here j plus plus if okay uh this text of i plus j okay so we have to take if text of i plus j is equal to pattern of j okay then we have to make flag is equal to 1 else flag is equal to 0 flag is equal to 0 okay so here in this loop we are trying to see if this first character is matching if this one is matching with this one or not if this one is matching with this one or not if this one is matching with this one or not if they are not matching then we are going to make flag is equal to 0 otherwise we are going to make flag is equal to 1 so we have to make if text is equal text of i plus j is equal to pattern of j why i am saying saying i plus j because every time we have to increment in the text also for example if text is initially i is at this location next time we have to make i to go to the next location that depends on the value of j okay so um correct right so either i can take text of i plus j or i can also make some changes here because what i have to do is instead of starting j Uh, from this location so let us start j from 0 so if we start j from 0 then i can easily write uh, text of i plus j is equal to pattern of j and after this for loop if j is equal to m then we can say pattern found then we can say uh, printf pattern found and we can return the index location of that location okay so here we can return the index location okay return index location but if we could not find the pattern then we have to say printf pattern could not be found and uh, uh, we can just return back to the main function by saying that we cannot find the pattern so that will be maybe minus 1 and so we have to make the uh, this location as integer okay return type as integer so this is the algorithm that we are going to implement okay so now let us start in the next video let us uh, try to see how we can implement this algorithm uh, for finding out the pattern uh, in a given text okay so let us move on to the next video about after this one so the first implementation that we are going to discuss is a naive string matching algorithm and we have already seen a simple implementation of naive string matching algorithm in the last video uh, now in this video we are going to make a programs uh, to implement this naive string matching algorithm right so we will be making the function assuming the function is uh, make it naive so name name the function is naive and this function should take two strings as input 
So uh, in C language, this uh, strings are implemented as array of characters, as we know. In Java and in .NET, the strings are implemented as classes, but here strings are implemented as array of characters. So we have to take those array of characters as input. We have to take those two strings as input in this uh, in this given function, and then uh, we can find out what is no what is that string. Okay, so we can just take those. Uh, assuming that we are also going to take the length of those strings as well as what is the string itself. So we are going to character. Uh, the first is pattern, or let us say character star text, and the second is pattern. So character star pattern. Okay, and then the length of this string. So integer n, which is the length of the string and uh, length of the text, and integer m, which is the length of the pattern. Okay, so we have uh, now we have taken the inputs as text as input, pattern as input, the length of uh, text is input, and length of, length of the pattern as input. Now we have to use a loop to find out their length. So as we know, so just for the implementation purposes, uh, just let me just explain it again uh, that we are going to have an entire string like this, and if this string can have any characters, it may be a, b, c, a, d. A, C, something, anything, right? So it may be having any number of characters here, uh, like H, right? So this is representing the text, and the length of the text is N, and we may be having a pattern. So assuming that this is representing the pattern, which is having A, B, A, C, and D, right? And this is representing the pattern. Now we need to find whether this pattern is present inside this text as a substring or not. But here in this case, wherever if this pattern is present and wherever this pattern is present, we are going to return the index locations of those places, right? It may happen that uh, the pattern may be repeating multiple number of times. So we may be we will be returning the index locations of those uh, starting index location of those those locations where this exact pattern is present inside this text. So if the length of the pattern is n. And length of the text is uh, the length of the pattern is m. Length of the text is n. So we have to search in this text, uh, and we have to go through in the data string matching algorithm. We have to match with every index locations here, and in worst case, we are going to match with n minus m plus one locations. So we will be having a loop which is going to run n minus one, uh, n minus m plus one times. So we'll be taking integer for integer i is equal to 0 and i less than n minus or less than make it less than equal to n minus m so because if you are going to make n minus m then obviously uh, because i is starting from 0 that is why it is going to print n minus m plus 1 times so either we can make i less than m minus m plus 1 Okay, so this is uh, how you can write. So you, uh, you can either you can make i less than n minus m, or you can less than equal to n minus m, or you can make i less than or less than n minus m plus one. So both the implementations are fine, and every time you are going to implement the value of i. Correct. Now, here we need to uh, find uh, the implement the next loop, which is the j loop, which is for the pattern. That uh, every time you have to compare the pattern from the text. Okay, that we have already seen the implementation, right? So we are going to take the next loop, which is for integer j is equal to zero, and this j should be less than m. So we have to make j should should be less than m because j should run for the pattern, and the length of the pattern is m, and we are going to make j plus plus, and this time, if if in this place we can say. Uh, Text of i plus j is not equal to pattern of j. That means if they are not equal, then we are going to break. Okay. So this is the first condition that we need to write down. Uh, okay, this is the condition, right? So this is what we need to write for this loop. Correct. So and if after this loop, if the value of j is equal to m, that we say found the pattern, j is equal to m, then print f pattern found at 
the index location which is printed by percentage d comma slash n comma i so this is a very simple implementation of this one okay let me let us first check whether it is working correctly or not uh, we are going to take two characters so two text so character assuming uh, we will be having let us take 20 index locations and uh, let us assume then text stored as my name is Himanshu. So how many characters are these there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and base is 20. So there are 20 characters. Okay. Uh, make it this much only. So there are yeah, there are 20 characters and then we have to take the text that we need to find out. So character, how many characters are there? Assuming that we are only trying to find four characters. So this is the text and this is the pattern. Character pattern and here it will be assume H I M A. So we need to find this one. Okay. So we are going to pass it to this function which is name and here we'll passing the text will be passing the pattern will be passing the length of the text which is 20 and the length of the pattern which is 4 and now we are going to implement this function we are going to see whether it is working or not so we are going to build and run so there is an error here so let us find out what is error. okay so error is because j is only present inside this loop so i have to make integer j here if you make integer j here then correct now let us again try and run so you can see the pattern found at index location 11 and the data which is present at index location is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so right so index location 11 h is present so uh, this entire pattern is matching what if the pattern is not matching so we can say else if the pattern is not matching that we are not doing anything correct so if the pattern is present multiple times what happens if the pattern is present multiple times and every time the pattern is present we are going to print the starting index location of those patterns okay now what we'll be doing is we'll be taking a huge data set maybe we'll be having a total 10,000 character set and in those 10,000 in, in an array of 10,000 we will be trying to find out whether a given pattern is present or not and every time the given pattern is present we are just going to print the index locations of those patterns okay so for simplicity uh, first of all we will write a function where uh, we are going to declare an array which is having 100 index locations and then inside that array of having 100 index locations we will try to insert some values okay and those values will be randomly generated characters and we are going to use those values to uh, you know come uh, find out a given pattern in a randomly generated text okay so for that we have to limit the range of a uh, of the uh, of this function which is the rand function so let me do one thing i'll just do a simple quick google search about finding out what is uh, how to limit the range of a rand function so how to limit the range of a rand function in C. So this is a very simple code actually. You just have to find what is the maximum range you want, what is the minimum range you want. So it should be somewhere. Yeah. So we have to find. Yeah. So this is the code that we'll be using to limit the range of the rand function. So I'm just going to copy it here and let us uh, make changes into this function. So um declaring a character text which is having 200 index locations and in this character we are going to make a for loop to insert random values so for uh, integer i is equal to 0 i less than 200 and i plus plus and we are going to insert values here so to insert values here so text of i we are going to make it to point to this okay where the maximum value that we want is 90 because sky value of z is 90 and minimum value is 65 and here also minimum value is 65 so because we know the sky characters uh, the sky value of capital a is 65 capital b is 66 in the same way uh, capital z is 90 so we are putting some uh, random values inside this text and assuming that we want to find g a t e 
if this is present in it or not gate as a uh, text okay so we be looking at this now we are going to again build and run so it is saying that it cannot find the character which is gate right so it is working correctly i hope so let us do one thing uh, we are going to print all these text values also uh, maybe i can also do a printf function here printf uh, we are going to say okay so printf we are going to find percentage c comma text of i that is whatever the values we are inserting we are trying to print those values okay now we are going to again build and run the program you can see uh, this is the text that we inserted this is the entire text that we inserted in, into the array and we are trying to find out whether GAT this pattern is occurring in this text but you can see this pattern is not occurring in this text now let us do one thing let us increase the size of this entire uh, pattern make it 2000 so we will see in 2000 text uh, can we have a gate as a text so you can see again in 2000 locations we cannot have we don't have this pattern which is gate maybe in 20,000 we can find it so if we have a pattern which is of length 20,000 can we find a four combination character which is GATD so you can, again so we cannot find it so this is 20,000 characters here but anyways you know how we implemented this function we can take any combination of characters and see if it is present so let us assume we want to find out Z double E W so Z double E W if this exists as a pattern or not so again build and run so you can see pattern found at index location 4500 so at 4500 if you see this code uh, this entire text so at 4500 index location the pattern which may be present okay so we can take any random text like this and we can find out whether this pattern is present or not in the same way uh, if for large data sets maybe you are having a data set which is having trillions of uh, characters or billion millions of characters in that way maybe it, it will become easier to find a given data set okay so this is a very very simple implementation which is the name algorithm and by looking at this name algorithm you can find out what is the time complexity of this function okay so what is the time complexity of this function uh, you can see this loop is going to run order of m times and this loop is going to run order of n minus n plus 1 times Therefore, the time complexity for this name function is order of n minus m plus 1 into m. So, this is the time complexity of the name function. Now, to improve, improve this time complexity, we introduced the other, other function, which is uh, the function for, uh, that is the rabin karp algorithm. So, rabin karp algorithm reduced some changes in the name algorithm to improve it. Okay. So, in the next video, we are going to study about the rabin karp algorithm. So, in this video, we just implemented the name function. Okay. So let us move on to the next video now. So in the previous video we have uh, seen the rabin karp algorithm and we have seen implementation for the rabin karp algorithm. Now in this video we will be seeing the next string matching algorithm which is based on the finite automata. And uh, it is see uh, it is very easy to create finite automata to match the strings. Uh, I think before studying this topic, if you have not studied, please go to the videos which I have already created on finite automata in theory of computation. Go through those videos because that way you will be able to understand how we create finite automata uh, for a given string. So here we are going to, I am just going to create, take one or two examples for creating the finite automata. Then we are going to convert those finite automata in the table. And then we are going to implement that table. Uh, in the program so that we will be able to match the strings so that is a very very simple string matching algorithm and it is you know it, it takes less time as comparative comparatively so it is uh, we are going to explain this how much time it is going to take to compare a given string and on the basis of this then we can improve the time complexity for this uh, finite automata based string matching algorithm to make the next algorithm which is the Knuth Morris Pratt or you can say the KMP algorithm now uh, let us assume uh, see there are two types of finite automata which are possible uh, for a given string so we'll be having a text as we already know and we'll be having a string okay or a string or you can say or pattern right so we may want to uh, match this we may want to find whether this pattern exists in this given text or not now if this pattern exists in this given text right now that pattern uh, 
can be overlapping or non overlapping so we can have a overlapping pattern overlapping or mm. we may be having a non overlapping pattern non overlapping so there are two types of implementations on this whether we have an overlapping pattern or a non overlapping pattern assuming that that in a given text we may want to find a b a c assuming that this is the given text or may make it a b a b that will be better and this is a pattern and the text that from where we want to search is a c a b c a b a b a b a c a b a b a b a b a a b a c okay now here if we say we have a overlapping pattern in that case this is a pattern here the pattern does exist as well as here the pattern does exist right in the same way here the pattern is existing here the pattern is existing here the pattern is existing right so there are 1 2 3 4 5 so in the five locations we have the given pattern but when we have a non overlapping non overlapping means they cannot overlap that means in case of non overlapping this is the first pattern that we have now this cannot be there in a non overlapping fashion because the second pattern should be here but it is not there so this is the pattern that we have and this is the pattern that we have so that is in case of non overlapping so in case of non overlapping from this given text there are three locations where this pattern is present and in case of overlapping there are five locations where this pattern is present so we can make a finite automata to mimic both the overlapping as well as the non overlapping uh, conditions whether uh, the string is present in a overlapping fashion or whether the string is present in a non overlapping fashion okay so let us take a few simple examples of the pattern and find out the finite automata based on this and uh, we'll be making the finite automata for the uh, overlapping pattern as well as for the non overlapping pattern okay assuming that the pattern that we want to find out from a given string is a b a a this is the pattern that we want to find out and for simplicity purposes here we are assuming that there are only two symbols in the text there is the symbols are a and b so you can say when i'm saying two symbols so this entire text will be containing only the combinations of a and b it can be a a a a b a b a a c a b whatever so this can be there so but there not there is no c here there only two uh, 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 characters are there that is a and b so the first one is the overlapping pattern overlapping where there is a overlapping so we want to find all the locations where this pattern is present but it can be overlapped so how you can make it uh, we are going to have a start state here a in the initial state in the starting you can see doesn't matter how many b's are there but as soon as you get a single a here as soon as you get the first a then first character we found out so we go to the next state and then as soon as we get a b here then the next character the next state is c and here doesn't matter how many a's you are going to get okay and then just give me a second yeah so and then we have next is a now if we get a next one more a then we found out that this string is existing here okay but here if we get one more b so the you know pattern broke so we should go to the starting state and here again if we get one more here we get a b then again we have to find the pattern uh, from here so if we get a b here then we go to this state and here if we get a b then we can go to uh, okay if we get a b then we can go to this state and if we get a a then we go to this state i guess this is correct okay so let me see uh, if it is correct or not so if this is the given pattern pattern is a b a a right if you get a first a from a to b we are going to go from a to b if you get a b then we are going to go from b to c if you get a a then we are going to go from c to d if you get one more a then we are going to go from d to e but assuming that if we have that given text that is pattern which is a b b a a b a b a a okay 
now from the first a we are going from a to b from state a to state b from this b we are going from state b to state c then if we get one more b that means we are going from state c to state uh, a so we are going to state c to state a again if you are getting one more a then we are go going to go from state a to state b then if you are getting one more a then we are going to go from b to b again if you are getting uh, a b then we are going to go from b to c then if you are getting a a then we are going to go from c to d now again if you are getting a b here we are not getting a if you are getting a b then we are going to go from d to uh, okay so it should be here there is a small mistake here it should not go to from d to b it should go from d to c yeah from d to c okay so that is from uh, if you get a b then we are going to from d to c and then if we get a, a then from c to d then again we figure a, a then d to e and see uh, we found a pattern here the given pattern is present here therefore we are at the final state here and because we are at the final state so you can say we found the given pattern so this is the finite automata for uh, overlapping pattern so as you can see it is very very simple to make uh, you just have you just require some experience for you know uh, how to create finite automata better is uh, there are some videos which are available on youtube also uh, for string matching for this fine uh, theory of computation how to make finite automata that is deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite aut automata you can go and watch those videos before studying this topic now if we have a known overlapping known overlapping then how this finite automata will look like if we have a known overlapping then it will look something like this initial state is a starting we can get any number of b's now if we get 1a then we'll go to the state which is b here we can have any number of a's if we get one more b then we'll go to the state c here if we get a b again then we should go to the start state but here if we get a a again then we should go to the state d but here in the state d if we get a b right so here the difference is if you get a b then we should go to the start state a again because the pattern is broken now okay i think sorry it should not be this yeah. so here in the d if you get a b then uh, we should go from here to here and again if you get a, a then we'll go to the final state e but here th there's a difference if in the final state a if we get a b then it should not overlap so we should go to the starting state because overlapping is not allowed correct in the same way in the st in the state e if we get a a right then we should go from here to here if we get a a so differences of this particular transition that is from the start from this final state e if you get a b then we should go to this state right so to find out the difference uh, we can view it like this if we have a given text like this a b a a b a a right so for this given text the first finite automata that means this one which is having overlapping it should give that there are two locations where we can find the pattern but the second known overlapping uh, should not give uh, two patterns here okay so let us see if we give it to this so from the initial state a to b if we give this a then we'll go from a to b then if we give this b then we'll go from b to c if we give this a then we'll go from c to d if you give this a, a then we go from d to e but if you give this b then we'll go from e to c you can see from e to c right so here we reach the final state from e to c and then from this next a we are going from c to d and from this one this a we are going from d to e again you can see two times you are reaching the final state therefore uh, the pattern existing here two times so these are the two locations where the pattern is existing but if we give the same string in a no no overlapping finite automata so in this no overlapping finite automata it should give that the pattern is only existing in the one location 
okay so let us first check it out uh, from initial state if we give the first a then we will go from a to b from if we give this b then we will go from b to c if you give this a then we will go from c to d if you give this next a then we will go from d to e right and that is a final state correct so after this e if you give the next b that is this b then we should go from e to again a right again after giving this a from a to we will go to the b after giving this a we will go from b to b itself and then b to c right after getting this b you can see here only one time we reach the final state hence you can see uh, we cannot find the overlapping here right so even if overlapping is present but still we can say that uh, the pattern is only existing in the one location because overlapping is not allowed so these are the two ways to create this string so that depends on our requirement how we want to design the finite automata whether we want overlapping or we want we do not want overlapping but for simplicity purposes here i'm assuming that we are going to create the finite automata for overlapping so that means we can have overlapping in the pattern and we can easily find whether the pattern is present or not now this is one example of a given pattern for which we can create a finite automata now in the next video we are going to take one more example of such kind of pattern for that pattern we are going to create an overlapping uh, finite automata and uh, after that we will move on to how to take this finite automata and then we can con convert this finite automata to a table table and it is not necessary that we always create a deterministic finite auto automata sometimes we can also create a non deterministic finite automata i think you know what is the difference between deterministic and non deterministic in this particular case we should know what is the transition that should be there so that we can easily find out the non determinism in that way okay so in the next example what i'll do is i'll create an overlapping finite automata but that should be non deterministic here you can see i have created a deterministic finite automata and every deterministic finite auto automata is equivalent to a non deterministic one okay now let us move on to the next video so in the last video we have seen uh, the rabin karp algorithm in the rebel carp algorithm i explained you how this algorithm is working and a rough pseudo code for the algorithm so in this video we are going to explain this program for the rebin carp algorithm actually i have already created this program before but the, uh, but the problem is you know that recording is not available now so i'm just uh, explaining this entire program to you how this program is working and uh, how i implemented this rebin carp algorithm here so as you can see rebin carp algorithm is based on uh, the hashing factor so Uh, we have to see how we hash uh, given values and accordingly we are going to match it okay so i have created this program so i'm just going to explain this program here and uh, I, i hope you will be able to understand this program very thoroughly here i'm also going to show you how this program is working if we are going to run this program and let us see this one okay so uh, we'll start with the main function as every program works so we'll start with the main function so here in the main function uh, i've created a, a array which is character text So in this array we are giving a string. So in this string we are giving hi my name is Himanshu Kaushik and Himanshu whatever. So this is a given string that we have. So this entire string this text will be stored inside a array. So let us see uh, if this is the entire array where this text is stored. So this array will be storing h i space my space name space is space h i m a n s h u himanshu space kaushik k a u s h i k and then we have space himanshu so this is the entire text that we have so by the way just uh, ignore the caps locks and uh, you know the small characters so that because uh, i just wanted to make it look same like this but i've written it like this okay so these are the index locations that we have so as you can see uh, there are some spaces blank spaces are also there and there are some spaces where we have characters so uh, let us number these locations and in the last we have a null character so index locations are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 
ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी सेवन ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी नाइन थर्टी थर्टी वन थर्टी टू थर्टी थ्री थर्टी फोर एंड सो दीज आर द इंडेक्स लोकेशन दैट वी हैव एंड देन वी हैव अ पैटर्न हियर सो पैटर्न इज स्टोरिंग हिमांशु ओनली सो एज्यूमिंग दैट दिस इज द पैटर्न विच इज स्टोरिंग एच आई एम ए एन एस एच यू हिमांशु एंड देन यूल बी हैविंग दिस नल कैरेक्टर and the index locations again 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and this is represented by the array which is pattern and this is represented by the array which is text okay from these two lines then we have we are taking some random number so this random number is actually used to find the hash function here so uh, and it should be a prime number so that will be better because prime numbers behave best as compared to uh, non prime numbers so it should be actually comparatively it should be prime as we have already seen the hashing concept if you if you don't know why we are taking this prime number just first of all just go to the hashing concept and see uh, the the rehashing concept in the rehashing concept you will understand that the uh, so that the hash function to make it the best we have to use some prime numbers so here we are going to pass a text pattern and this random number to this given array okay so uh, let me show you to how this entire procedure is working so here in this function we are passing uh, this text pattern and this q okay q is showing 101 then we are finding the length of this text and the pattern so we first first of all we found the length of the pattern then we found the length of the text then we have taken two variables integer integer i and j and uh, then we have p t and h these are three variables where p i have taken it is going to store the hash value of the pattern and t is going to store the hash value of the text as i have already shown you that we are going to store uh, this for example if the pattern is of four characters then we are going to find the hash value of the pattern that is of four characters and we are also going to take first four characters from the text and we are going to find the hash values of those first four characters and here uh, it is representing that hash okay so first of all uh, we are using this uh, finding uh, we are using this value to find the hash function and accordingly we, here we are going to find the hash values okay so as you can see uh, we are just hash we are just performing the hash function on the pattern as well as we are also performing the hash function on the text so we found the first hash values then uh, here we are running this uh, row from i to n minus 1 that is from here to the location which is n minus 1 so 0 to up to so on n minus 1th index location we are going to run this loop if tech pattern is equal to text that is that means that means if the hash value of this pattern and the hash value of this text if they are matching then maybe they are having chances of you know it it is having high chances that we are going to get the text correctly so we are going to you know uh, match each and every character one by one so that means we are going to take this characters as well as take this characters we are going to find the hash value of this and we are going to find the hash value of this and if their hash values are matching then we are going to match these locations one by one every index location so here we are matching every index locations one by one and if uh, after this if we can find the entire pattern here in this text then we can print that uh, pattern found at the particular index location but if it is not found that means if this condition is false then uh, okay even if this condition is true or even if this condition is false then we'll move on to the next case where we find the hash value of the next given segment for example for this segment we cannot find if the hash values are not matching then we'll go to the next segment and we'll try to see if their hash values are matching or not so here we are finding the hash value of the next segment and if the hash value is uh, you know next text segment and uh, then again we'll go back to this for loop okay so here you can see this this if conditions from here to here the if is from here to here this if is from here to here and here the for loop is from here to here so then we'll go to the for loop to the next location okay so this is how you can see this uh, these functions are working correct so now let us move on to this next case so, uh, so this is the entire function that we have so uh, let me first of all let me run this function and show you how it is working or not uh, as you can see uh, this is the text we have and this is the pattern we have so i'm just going to go to build and i'm going to run build and run so you can see 
the pattern founded the index location 14 uh, and pattern also founded the index location 31 so you can see from 31 here from the index location 31 we have having Himanshu here and here from the index location 14 we are having Himanshu here so we can find the pattern in the two locations right so what if we remove the pattern from these two locations that means if I am uh, removing Himanshu second Himanshu if I am uh, having only one Himanshu then if I am going to build and run so you can see again this program is working correctly it is showing that pattern found at the index location 14 only so you can see this entire program is working correctly and we are not facing any kind of issues with it correct so this is the rabin karp algorithm and uh, do one thing uh, try to analyze what is the time complexity of the rabin karp algorithm and uh, then let us move on to the next algorithm which is using the finite automata based algorithm okay so this was the rabin karp algorithm let us move on to the next section hamare latest updates paane ke liye channel ko subscribe kare aur bell icon ko dabana bilkul na bhule taki hamare sabhi notifications aapko sabse pehle mile Digimen to Education is India's best platform to prepare for GATE, NTA, UGC, NET and PGT Computer Science. ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट www.digimento.com पर विजिट करें.